Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this video uh, discussing dynamic arrays inside of VBA. And so I made a previous video talking about fixed length arrays. And fixed length arrays, you basically create the array, and at the time of creation, you are creating, you're basically telling VBA how many elements are going to be in this array. So you might say something like uh, dim my array 1 to 5 as a double, uh, where you're going to have five different elements of type double in there. And that's fine. Um, it's got a lot of purpose. A lot of uses, uh, but sometimes in code you might want to be able to have an array that changes its length depending on what you need. And so that's where dynamic arrays come into play. And so they let you grow them, shrink them, uh, depending on the needs at that point in time when your code is executing. And so how you do that is you use a couple keywords. One is redim. Redim is going to be used on statements where you're actually going to resize the array. You can make it larger, you can make it bigger, larger, bigger, smaller if you need to as well. Um, also, you use preserve if you're wanting to keep the elements in the array uh, when you go to resize it. And so, with that being said, let's see if we can make this work. And so here I'll just be creating a public subroutine to test this out. Um, we'll call our array cars as string. And so in that statement, dim cars open close print that string, I'm creating a dynamic array called cars. It's going to hold elements of type string. And notice I've got open and close print, but I didn't put anything in between those. Uh, that's how I know it's going to be dynamic. In a fixed length array, I'd have to say something like 1 to 5 or put in the highest index uh, number here in order to size it. And so at this point, we've created an array, but it doesn't know how big it is, so we'll use read in statement. And I'll say read in cars one, two, three. And so now we're going to have the cars array have three different elements element index number one, two, and three. Uh, so let's start populating it then. And so I'll just call out each element here and populate it with three different cars. And so we can run this code really quickly. I got a breakpoint there at in sub. I'll put cars in the watch. Right click and add watch and put cars in. And you can see I've got cars 1, 2, and 3, Dodge, Ford, and Jeep there. Uh, just as you'd expect, I'm really I haven't introduced anything new in this video that you couldn't do with a fixed length array. And so let's say we want to add one more item to the end of this array. Let's say we've got a BMW we want to add to the list. And so we can do that. Um, we'll do redim again. So we're going to resize the cars array. I'll say one, two. I could put four here, but I'm going to go ahead and say you bound cars. And so we need a you bound cars, but then we need to add one. A you bound is a array function. It's basically going to return the highest subscript of that particular dimension of the array. Uh, in this case, just 1D, so I'm um, just going to be the, the 3 here. It's going to be 3 plus 1, so it's going to read into 4. And so I can show you this uh, pretty easily here. I'll put a breakpoint there at that statement. I'll run to the breakpoint. Now you can see I've got Dodge, Ford, and Jeep, just as we had before. As soon as I hit F8, you can see now the string goes to 1 to 4. So now there's 4 spots in it. But notice here we've got all of our elements as the empty string. And so that's because we didn't use preserve there. Basically it resized the array, but then it deleted everything, all the contents of the array. And so we can fix that if we want to keep those elements by just putting in the keyword preserve there. And so then I'll rerun it again with the keyword preserve. Got the breakpoint right there. And I've got cars, Dodge, Ford, and Jeep as usual. And then I'll hit F8 to go at the next step. And I've got Dodge, Ford, and Jeep still there. And then the empty string because I haven't put anything in that last spot. Well, of course, let's go ahead and add our BMW to the last spot. And so I'll say cars. Now I'm just going to put U bound of cars. So and that'll put it at the very end. And we'll put in BMW. And so again, just running this real quick. Do that first read in statement. Now I've got three elements in the array. Dodge, Ford, and Jeep. Hitting F8. Executes it. Now I've got Dodge, Ford, and Jeep plus the empty string. Then at F8 one more time. Adds BMW to the last indexed slot of that array. So that looks pretty good. Um, one thing that I did want to also show is what happens if you 
resize it to something lower than the current size. And so instead of viewing U bound plus one, so we do U bound minus one. And so this will eliminate this last index. So now it's just going to be dodge and deep, or dodge and forward, excuse me. So I can show that just by uh, running it. Go to F5 here. We've got three dodge, forward, and jeep as usual. I've got an issue there in my code. And then when I go and execute the, the redim, now I'm just at dodge and forward because I'm eliminating that last position there. Um, I've got preserve in there, so it's still going to keep those um, elements that are currently in the first part of the array present. And so hopefully this gives you a taste of how to work with the dynamic arrays. You can start using those in your code. Um, here I've just got another example that does something very similar. And then again, here's the, the reference I'm using for some of the background information that I'm, as far as concepts that I'm using in these videos. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it helps you out in your VBA coding.